Hi, it's Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers, one of the eye surgeons here at Visionary Eye Doctors. Thank you for subscribing and joining us for our podcast, The EYE Show. This is episode number 20, where we're going to talk about Accutane. And I have many kind of stories to tell you about patients that have taken Accutane. So we're going to go into the history of it a little bit, how it works, how it potentially damages cells inside the body, and why it can be so damaging to the eye in terms of dry eye. And so I, I like to um, start off sometimes with a little bit of a, um, a story. And I just want to uh, say thank you to all of you for, for encouraging me to do this podcast. Many of you have over the years. And initially, we were, I was a little nervous about it, obviously, because you do have to do a little bit of research. And so last night at a, our son's school, the headmaster was kind of talking about how they're trying to do a podcast for the way they teach students at the Heights. And he got a question uh, that was kind of like, well, do you think that by spending so much time on the podcast, it's going to take away from the students that are actually there. And I thought it was a really good question. And the headmaster answered it brilliantly and said, actually, by doing a podcast, you actually are researching more than you probably have on a particular topic, and you become a better teacher. And I would have to say that is true. I've learned so much about Accutane and about many of the topics that I talk about because I want to try to explain it as clearly as, pos as possible to all of you and, of course, understand it. So in order to be a real expert in something, you got to teach it. And that's always been the case. And I I've, I've definitely experienced that through this podcast. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for passing it on to patients. Uh, we get a lot of questions about Accutane. Accutane was initially uh, developed, researched, and, and kind of developed in 1960s, in the 1960s in the United States. And it was a drug which the, the name of it is 13-cis-retinoic acid, which is a vitamin A derivative. And like vitamin A, it has very important, important potential possibilities and negatives. Uh, too much vitamin A can be damaging as well. And so in the 1960s, it was looked at to be a possible treatment for certain types of cancer. But around that time, there was a drug called thalidomide, which many of you know in Europe was approved and treated, used to treat women in Europe and all many places, even the United States, as a treatment for nausea. I think it was actually even FDA approved at one point, but it was quickly taken off the market because they found that babies with thalidomide would be born without limbs or without with horrible deformities. And that happened in quite a number of babies in Europe. I, one of my friends actually was a thalidomide baby who had very little side effects from thalidomide, but her mother took it. So they took, pulled it off the market. So when they were doing research on what's now known as Accutane or this 13-cis-retinoic acid, they didn't pursue it because they saw that there was potential risk for birth defects in rats. But then research continued, and then they found that it was actually effective against certain cancers and then also very effective against cystic acne. So it was approved in 1982 by the FDA, and it quick, they quickly found out that that teratogenic or the, the damage to the baby or the fetus was severe, and there were thousands of babies that were born with birth defects. There were many miscarriages. It was kind of many pediatricians wanted to pull it off the market, and so a constant battle developed between the developer of Accutane, the biggest brand of, of the retinoic acid in the United States at the time, uh, Roche Pharmaceuticals, and patients that were obviously suing for major, major side effects. There are many possible potential positives of Accutane, and it's been used by 13 million at least women and men uh, since 1982's FDA approval for cystic acne. It's indicated when everything else has failed. But I have friends that have taken Accutane. I'm sure many of you know people that have taken Accutane. And sometimes the actual concern of the psychological impact of acne or the parent wanting the child to have a perfect face or not have to deal with the scars, the emotional scars of acne, can push a dermatologist or a doctor to prescribe uh, Accutane without full informed consent. And so I want you to understand what Accutane does. I'll tell you about my personal opinion about <clears throat> Accutane at the very end, having seen many, many patients that have suffered with terrible dry eye because of it. So the molecule, the actual retinoic acid molecule, binds to plasma proteins, specifically albumin. And this is very important in how it actually works. It works to basically cause cell death in many types of cells, specifically the sebaceous cell. So the sebaceous cell on our face is producing oil, and it's really effective at treating really chronic cystic acne by drying up the oil that's on the face from the sebaceous glands. But one of the big side effects is it does that throughout the whole body. 
it does it in the colon. And there's been now many lawsuits of people that are noticing that they have ulcerative colitis or big, big what we call gastrointestinal problems because they took Accutane. There's been many payouts and lawsuits of, about this. There was a patient that uh, sued saying that he needed a colostomy, whereas they take out the colon and they connect your colon to a bag outside, which is very unpleasant to have uh, because he, he thought it was from, from Accutane. So that's a long kind of ongoing uh lawsuit that many patients have experienced. I have a friend who also is convinced that his ulcerative colitis and his gastrointestinal problems were because of acne. He took one course for six months uh, and he's convinced it was from that. So that's a big side effect. We know Accutane can also cause depression, mental illness, uh, by kind of a psychological component. I don't know if I understand how that happens with the actual mechanism, but it's been reported even suicidal ideation or even suicides have been reported in people that take Accutane. It's very hard to prove causation, as we all know. It took, I think, about 30 years to prove smoking caused cancer. And even then, there were executives in the smoking industry that denied it. Uh, so it's you know very hard with Accutane to say that it's causative or is it associated you know, is associated. Uh, is it causing it? It's always tricky. Maybe the acne was causing depression and not the Accutane. That's what uh, the defense would say. So we know it causes that concern as well. It can cause dry lips, dry skin, has some sometimes negative effects on that. And so if you look at the Wikipedia page, which I did, on all the reported side effects, and I printed it out because it was quite an impressive list, it looks at a lot of side effects reported with Accutane, anything from anemia, which is a decrease in your red blood cell count, to headaches, uh, kind of all kinds of different types of issues with skin, back pain, myalgia, uh, decreasing your good uh, cholesterol, increasing your bad cholesterol. There's all these reported uh, potential associations. When it comes to the eye, what's surprising is there's very little discussion of what really is going on with the eyeball. And so what the molecule does to the skin, it also does to those meibomian glands, those glands that I've showed you before, those little kind of white uh, lines that we check on mybography that are filled with oil called the meibomian glands are crucial to not noticing your eye having no pain. If those glands dry up, you will have chronic pain. You could even have scar tissue on your cornea, and we're seeing that obviously in many, many patients around the world that come to see us. Accutane does something that is particularly concerning. It makes the meibomian glands look normal. And let me quickly just show you. And what I'll do, hopefully, in the next podcast is show you the video of what it's actually doing. So. But just to show you, the normal mybography, as we've shown you before, is these white lines filled with oil. And on mybography of Accutane patients, they can look completely normal. There's something, I don't know if the oil has stained the gland and the, the stain is there, but when you do any type of expression or you try to actually get that oil to come out, it doesn't come out. And if it does come out, it, if it does come out, it's white. It is full of inflammatory factors, we think. There's something different about the way the oil looks in Accutane patients than in normal patients. The oil, when you blink, should come out like a burst of golden colored olive oil, just diffuse into the tear film. With Accutane patients, initially, the majority of them that come in with any type of symptom, there's very little oil that comes out initially. It takes multiple sessions of either intense pulse light or probing to get the oil to even start to come out. When it starts to come out, it is white. Sometimes it's a little dot of white oil that comes out or white globs of oil. And over time, we've had a couple of patients that can get to the normal component, but it takes some time. We've had two patients that have had stem cells inserted into their glands, trying to see if we can make their stem cells work to get the oil to come out. I think that combination that I've talked about before of combining embryonic safe cord blood serum, which is non-controversial, plus a patient's own platelets and plus probably a patient's own stem cells would probably do the trick to heal that original stem cell that possibly was damaged inside the meibomian gland by the Accutane. But the Accutane in some patients can be devastating. And I've had a series of patients that can no longer work, cannot even open their eyes you know, outside, they're recluses in their own home. And this is nowhere mentioned really in the Wikipedia page in terms of the devastation it can cause. They mention meibomian gland dysfunction, but they don't tell you exactly what that means. And so I want people to understand that this drug, uh, which is now marketed generically, uh, Roche, the, the uh, 
license for Roche expired in 2002, but you can get it as a generic drug pretty much anywhere in the world, has major potential side effects that you might not notice for 20 years later. We have every week, we have a patient that had Accutane sometimes 20 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago, sometimes even two weeks ago, that noticed the effect. So if you have a history of rosacea, you're Caucasian, which a lot of patients are that have Accutane because of the acne issue, you've had LASIK, you're on screens more than four hours a day, you're hitting, you're, that's a double whammy. You're gonna end up having potential problems down the line. So if you've taken Accutane and there's 13 million people that have, and the majority of patients probably don't have dry eye. One of my best friends took Accutane for two years and has no dry eyes, but she's still young. And so she hasn't noticed anything and she's not a programmer and she doesn't have rosacea. So, you know, there's, there's definitely risk factors that put people in a different category. So if you know somebody that's taking Accutane, I would highly recommend you do some research on it. Talk to your dermatologist try to go to the root cause of, of acne. We have many papers showing that if you just change the diet, you go gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, take out of the inflammatory factors in your diet, consider intermittent fasting. Uh, those things can actually do a great job with decreasing acne naturally. And trying to avoid the Accutane as much as possible is really crucial for long-term side effects. So how do we treat Accutane patients? We do what we've heard before in terms of the warm compressors, trying to milk the oil. The problem is in those patients, the oil is probably not coming out. So we quickly know we need to do intense pulse light and often probing. There is that Accutane component that's causing some unusual scar tissue in the gland that has to be opened up to allow that oil to come out. And usually once that oil does come out, symptoms improve. So we know the Accutane does affect the meibomian glands. I highly suspect it's affecting the lacrimal gland and the mucin layer, but there's still not really definitive studies to prove that. So we know we're affecting multiple layers. I think we're affecting multiple layers, but especially the most crucial layer, which is the oil gland, the meibomian gland layer, the oil gland layer, and that can cause the consequences that we're seeing. So. My opinion is that this drug should not be used in any, really anybody, unless they really understand the consequences. And that's hard to appreciate when you're a teenager and you are noticing acne every day. There is now some laws in place in the United States where you have to have multiple, if you're a woman, pregnancy test beforehand, you have to sign you know, your understanding of it. There's something called I pledge online that doctors and patients have to be part of to make sure they understand what they're getting into. But a lot of teenagers have no idea and they and their parents don't have any idea they've heard of it they've heard it to be a safe drug and they don't know the potential consequences so I would definitely think twice before ever ever suggesting Accutane to anybody and whenever I have a patient that has Accutane on board with no symptoms I tell them to get off because it's just so risky in terms of what we're seeing down the line so I hope this was helpful please pass it on to friends and family don't forget forget to uh, subscribe to our podcast and thank you for your continued suggestions for the podcast have a great day bye-bye